I think by now most of you have heard of the Ryzen A10. Now for those of you who have not, it is a 6 watt tube integrated amp costing around 350 to 400 US, including shippings to the States. Now Sean at Zero Fidelity introduced it last year and ever since then, there have been a lot of good reviews online. Now one of the joy of owning a tube amp is tube rolling, meaning swapping the same type of tubes with different brands. Now for those of you who have never done it, it can change the sound significantly and it is hard to imagine unless you have experienced it. Now as good as the A10 was, one of the shortcomings of the Ryzen A10 is that it uses 6N2J tubes and these are not popular tubes so tube rolling with it is limited to the power tubes and that's the ER34 you see at the back of the amp. Now, with the Ryzen A12, they solved this problem by replacing the 6N2J with 12AX7. Now, 12AX7 is one of the more common tubes, and this opens up to a lot more possibilities. The new Ryzen A12 is $500 USD, including shipping to the States. So I would say around 100-ish more than the A10. Yes, I know it is listed at 200 bucks the A10, but as you know, once you start adding taxes, shipping, tips, it gets close to about 350 to 400. Now, I'm sure you all want to know if the A12 is better than the A10. So today, let's talk about the Ryzen A12. A big thank you to China Hi-Fi Audio for sending me this unit and I will link to their site in the description as well as the first comment. They did explain to me that the A12 is more expensive due to the increase in shipping and material costs. Now sadly this applies to most audio companies I've talked to today. I think they mentioned about losing money for each sale on their website like the Ryzen A10. So uh, go check it out if you're curious. My wife was uh, listening to the A12 earlier this morning and when I told her the price of the A10 and A12, she was wondering, man, how do they make money at that price? Now, regarding the specs, the A12 and A10 are almost identical. Both output six watt per channel, both use two EL34 power tubes, a 5Z4P rectifier tube, and as I mentioned earlier, instead of the two 6N2J in the A10, the A12 uses two 12AX7 tubes. Now, I like the fact that it only weighs 10 kilograms, so it's easy for me to bring it from my main listening room to my bedroom. At one point, I keep bringing it up and down, up and down, and I feel like I was like a kid carrying a teddy bear, bringing it everywhere I go with it. Now, in terms of sound, the A10 and A12 sounds almost the same. In fact, Mark, who lent me the A10, did an A-B test and told me that although he was able to pinpoint the differences, having said that, he said, you know, I would have a hard time passing a blind test with uh, my Klipsch Forte 3 speakers. Yeah, that's what he told me. And uh, Sean already has described the sound of the A10 in detail, so I'm just going to quickly summarize it instead. Now what you have is a mild V curve with a slightly boosted uh, treble and bass. At 6 watt, this amp is not about power or dynamics, but more about warmth and body in the mid-range. If your speakers are efficient, the bass can be strong. And I do wish it was a bit faster though for the bass. Now the sound stage is not super wide. It has uh, layering in the sound stage. Overall, I would say this is an amp that's more for more on the relaxed side. Now, if you want more detail, just go watch Sean's video because uh, I've already plagiarized this video enough. Next, let's talk about what you need to be aware of if you plan to buy this A12. Now, just like the A10, it only comes to 6 watt and there's limitation. You need efficient speakers to bring out the best from it. It's not just a question of volume, but also of dynamics. Now, if you look online, you see that this issue of volume and dynamics is frequently brought up. So you should pay attention to that. Now, another thing that can be a deal breaker is that it does not come with a remote. So let's move on to what I like about the A12. Just like the A10, what really stands out with the A12 is the mid-range. 
Now, regardless of price, the vocals are really good with the A12. For those of you who are not familiar with tube amps, there is push-pull and there's single-ended. The A12 is single-ended, and although single-ended are less powerful, I find their mid-range more to my liking. Now, this is a Class A single-ended amp. In fact, it can rival some other high-end amps that I have here. Not only me, if you go online, you can see people leaving similar comments. Sure, it will not have the dynamics or transparency of my other higher end amps, but as I said, this is not what the A12 is about. These days, I'm spending a bit more time trying single-ended amps. I'm currently listening to this Simply Italy from uh, Unison Research, and man, it's fantastic. Well, it's four times the price, but still, it's fantastic. Um, I might eventually make a video on the amp too. Now, regarding the A12 and A10, the difference. As I said, they sound similar, but there is enough difference for me to prefer the A12. The A12 is more transparent, more detailed, raspier in the midst. There is more texture. And interestingly, when Mr. Vintage uh, compared the A12 to the Musical Paradise MP301, it was stock tubes, now not EL34, he found that there is more contrast in the A12 mids, while the MP301 have smoother mid-range. And I noticed the exact same thing when comparing the A12 to the A10. With more contrast in the mids with the A12, the singer seems to pop out more. Now, when I first power up the A10, switching from the A12, my first reaction is, wow, it sounds smoother. But the problem is, once the A10 warms up, it sounds too smooth relatively speaking. I feel like there's a veil in front of it when compared to the A12. And I keep wanting to go back to the A12. You see, the A10, I always wished it was a bit more transparent and have more detail on the top end. And with the A12, it is more transparent and it has more detail on the top end. Now, regarding tube rolling with the A12, Mr. Vintage spent a lot of time trying different tubes with the A12. Now let me share a video of what he was doing on the day of testing the A12. Mr. Vintage even took the time to test all the tubes before using it on the A12. I gotta say man, he has a lot of energy and I admire his dedication. The conclusion he got from tube rolling was that the only tubes that really made a big difference, I mean significant difference, were tubes that cost as much as the A12 itself. So good news. It means that the stock tubes are already excellent. Mr. Vintage really liked the right song and wants to buy it now because if you happen to be like Mr. Vintage with like gazillion tubes at home, you can have a lot of fun with the A12. Now at my place, I have these Sophia high-end EL34 tubes. Uh, I borrowed them. And uh, some new old stock Telefunken 12 AX7. And yeah, they cost as much as the A12, but man, once I put it in, the transparency and detail is like another level. The treble is more tilted up, it sounds a lot cleaner, and you see, the Rysong M is not really refined, and it's a bit grainy. However, with high-end tubes, I was surprised the slight graininess is completely gone. And uh, the only thing is, with the high-end tubes, some might find the top end a little bit too emphasized. The point here is with the A12, I have a lot of options in fine tuning the sound, and that's the fun of owning a tube amp. Now, between you and me, man, tube audiophiles like me are kind of nuts. If you think about it, okay, like this Synthesis A42 integrated amp I have here, it sounds amazing with stock tubes, and yet the first thing I wonder is if I can get it to sound better if I upgrade the tubes. And I bet some of you are like me. All right, so let's wrap it up at this point. Now, some of you might be curious, why would I say the sound difference between the A10 and A12 is not really big? You're talking about 12AX7 versus 6N2J tubes. And Mr. Vintage actually opened up the tube amp and measured it. He found that the 12AX7s are actually getting only six volts, like the 6N2J. Now, 12AX7 can handle more volt voltage than that, and we wonder if it would sound a lot more different if they build it closer to the 12AX7 max voltage specs. Who knows? But the good news is you can spend a lot of money on the 12AX7 if you want to, since it will most likely last almost forever due to it running at way lower voltage. Now, 
In short, I personally prefer the A12 over the A10 because it addresses the shortcomings of the A10. I have the options to tube roll, it is more transparent, and mid-range has more contrast, meaning, as I mentioned, like the singer pops out more. Uh, can you get a 6N2J to 12AX7 adapter and plug a 12AX7 to a Ryzen A10 and get the same results? I have no idea, but you know what? I did change the rectifier tube from 5Z4P to 5AR4, and after a while, I started hearing a hum from the A12. Luckily, it didn't cause permanent damage. Now, as I mentioned in my Ryzen A10 video, I would recommend this amp to those who have very efficient speakers or buying it for a second system. And the primary goal of the second system is to listen to vocals. Now, for those of you who have never experienced experience single-ended tube amps, this is definitely a great entry point. There's a reason if you go online and read comments, people would put the Ryzen A10 against their own high-end system. Of course, a bit of common sense is needed Okay, when reading those comments, although it will not challenge those high-end systems in terms of dynamics, volume, and bass. For example, However, do not be surprised if it outperforms them when it comes to vocals. Now, I will record today's sound demo with my upgraded Focal A36W speaker. It has a custom crossover modified cabinet. And uh, this speaker has a lot of bass. Uh, actually, more than the Focal 1028 Beryllium speaker, which is like two levels up. And this one has more bass. Now, the Ryzen A12 cannot fully control it. But regardless, because I guess it's somewhat efficient, these speakers, it sounds pretty good. So um, yeah, that's why I recorded the sound demo with it. So with that said, I will see you guys next time.